Hello everyone! Recently I came across this exciting concept of bottom navigation. And in this video I will show you how I implement it in Jetpack Compose. In the beginning I wasn't even sure how the effect was created, but after a short googling I found one tutorial in Adobe After Effects. Basically, the idea behind this effect is that the original image is at first blurred, objects close to each other merge into one mass, then the image is sharpened again, but the alpha channel is slightly shifted. Easy in animation software, but how to implement it on Android? Fortunately, since Android 12 it's easy to apply common graphic effects using render effect. It's even possible to chain multiple effects and apply them directly to a view or composable. I went through the documentation and figured out that I would need two graphical effects to achieve similar results. Blur and color matrix, color filter. To set render effect, Jetpack Compose provides graphic layer modifier. It applies a visual effect to a result of the graphic layer scope before it's drawn on the screen. This is an example of using the blur effect. After applying the blur effect, each pixel in the resulting image has a value equal to average value of its neighboring pixels in the input image. The radius controls the size of the neighboring area around the x and y axis. A higher radius means more blurry image. Color matrix filter is a little bit more difficult. It's a color filter that transforms colors through a 4 times 5 color matrix. For a better understanding of how the color matrix works, let's name each component in the matrix with letters from A to T. When we apply the matrix to a pixel in RGBA color space, the result is computed as follows. The sum of the red color channel multiplied by A, the green channel multiplied by B, the blue channel multiplied by C, alpha channel multiplied by D, plus E equals the value of the red color channel of the resulting pixel. And likewise for other channels. For example, this color matrix inverts incoming colors by scaling each channel by minus 1 and then shifting the result up by 255 to remain in the standard color space. Android implementation is pretty straightforward. We only need to provide a matrix as a float array. By using the right matrix parameters, we can get for example a grayscale picture where all color channels are the same or a picture with inverted colors. However, we don't actually need to change any color information. The important part for us will be the last line of the matrix, the alpha channel. Let's take a look again at the color matrix equations. When we get rid of all colors, we get this simple linear equation mapping the opacity of the input image to the opacity of the resulting image. When we set the S to 1 and T to 0, we preserve the same opacity and we have this smooth transition on the edges of the blurred image but we need to have more binary-like opacity. It means everything under some threshold should be 0 and everything above should be 1. So I increase the S value and you can see that the mapping is now steeper. When I decrease the T value, the graph has moved more to the right and we can adjust these variables to have almost binary alpha channel values in the resulting image. It's worth mentioning that the values are clamped to range from 0 to 255. Now, let's chain color filters together and play with different settings to see if we can get the similar results as in the animation at the beginning of this video. Yes, this looks pretty similar. Now let's open Android Studio and implement it.
At first, I create custom bottom navigation, similar to the one from the beginning of the video. To achieve a similar look, I've created a custom shape in a vector editor, which I'm using as a background, and two icon buttons with some standard material design icons. And you can already see how it looks in the preview window. Next, I create a wrapper around the floating action button for easier manipulation and preventing code duplication. It will be used for the plus button and three other buttons moving on the screen. All these animated buttons will be displayed in a floating action button group. I will use animation progress which is just a floating value from 0 to 1 to control the current position of the buttons. And here will be also applied the render effect. At first, I will try it only with the main button. OK. The getRender effect method creates a chain effect, consists of the blur effect and color filter effect as I showed before. Parameters are hard-coded for now. Let's see how it looks in the preview. As you can see, there is one issue. The rendering effect cleaned up the content of the button, in this case the plus icon but it can be easily solved when I put the same button group on the top of this one, but this time without the render effect. As I said at the beginning of the video, the render effect works only on devices with Android 12 and higher. I need to add one check to prevent runtime crashes on older phones. Then I can add more buttons and use the value of animation progress to control the padding of buttons. Progress is adjusted for each button, so they can move in different time periods, and it's transformed using easing, so they speed up quickly and slow down gradually. Then the adjusted progress is multiplied by some hard-coded padding value to get the final padding. Similar to opacity, to get a more natural looking effect of icons appearing and disappearing. To keep the code more clean and testable, I implemented the animation in the parent composable. Whenever the isMenu extended value changes, the animate float estate starts a new coroutine changing the animation progress to the desired value. And let's try it in the preview. Nice, it's almost there. Let's create a circle that will be used as a background for the reduce button as well as another animation effect. When the user clicks on the extend or reduce button, circle pops up for a short time. This animation will be a little bit shorter, so it would be better to use another progress value to control it. And this is the final result. Animation is not very smooth in the preview window, but on the real device it looks much better. I hope you liked this video. If so, please share it with others and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.